Well, welcome to the Sean Trey Show. I have a really awesome guest with me today. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell people who you are and what you do? Yes. Hello, everybody. Happy what day is it? Thursday. Um, Thursday. My name is Corbin Hunter. Um, I'm originally from Minneapolis, Minnesota, but I reside now in Los Angeles, California. Been here for the past eight years or so. Um, nice. Moved out here to be a professional dancer, and that is what I do. And I love what I do. I've been dancing since I was two years old. So it's my passion. And I can gracefully and humbly say I've been able to achieve a lot of success this far in my career. And I'm just so happy to be here today with Sean and talking to all you guys. And it's going to be a good show. Good, going to be a good one. I love that. Now, you kind of touched on what was going to be one of my, my next questions. Like, how did you get into dance? How did you get into this? I mean, was this the type of thing? You said you were dancing since two. Was this like something that you you knew from an early age this is what you wanted to do? Or was this just something you started exploring early on? How, how did that all pan out? Yeah. So my mother, actually, she was a dancer. And I really? think she's like, okay, well, I have three daughters. Well, my youngest daughter came after me, obviously. But I have two daughters and, mm-hmm. you know... They look so cute in a tutu. So let me go ahead and put them in dance and they need to get some energy out. So I think that's kind of how it started. Um, I don't think I actually like fell in love with dance until probably like I was like seven, six, eight around that age range. So, mm, okay. Yeah. No, no. So you started into dance classes. Did you do formal training? Were you studying jazz, ballet? What did you start into? So I actually... Um, was put into a competition dance studio, Stage Door, for performing arts, um, based out of Coon Rapids, Minnesota. I don't think they're no longer open now, but um, I was training in everything, ballet, tap, nice. jazz, you know, hip hop. That was mostly where I started. Um, and then as I got older, I started to broaden my um, styles that I learned. Um, I went to a performing arts high school. So for them, I, I got to do salsa, you know, like different styles of hip hop, nice. West African, um, just kind of everything. I wanted to know it all, modern, all styles of modern. So, yeah, you could definitely say I'm a well-rounded <laughs> uh, dancer. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That, now, what, when did you like feel like the bug bit you you know you were just like when did it become like this was something that you knew was your thing it yeah Yeah. um probably when i was 16 Mm -hmm. um i auditioned for a job in minnesota and it was to dance for willow smith and yes i was what a junior sophomore in high school i believe yeah maybe sophomore sophomore in high school going into my junior year. Um, and I got to, I performed with her and I got to meet Beyonce backstage because she was, um, also performing. And I just was like, ah, oh, this is what I want to do. <laughs> and from 16 on, I was like, all right, game plan. Let's go. How are we going to get to LA? And that was yeah. when I kind of knew for Corbin that, this was my be all, uh, you know, LA was the goal. And, um, yeah, I can, that's probably, I could pinpoint when I said yes to following this dream of professional dance. You just, you just tapped on something that I love. <laughs> you just tapped on something that I love. And that, that comes up as a common theme in, mm. in my podcast with people that are talking about inspiration and their journey. Yeah. Say yes. Say yes. Yeah. It, and it, it, it's something that a lot of people don't think about the power of that simple statement, because we, we so often go through life. It, it's really interesting. And I, I try to come at this with no judgment, yeah. but when, when we'll talk uh, to people on my podcast, one of the things that I notice is that there is in a ton of people, sometimes people will have self, not a ton of people, but a lot of people will have this self-limiting speech. You know, that's awesome, but I could never achieve that. That's yeah. great. But I don't think I can get there. And sometimes you got to say yes, because to, to just the opportunity to, to life and, and again, no judgment, find what makes you happy, find where you're content, find your path and your journey, but you got to figure out ways to say yes. When, when did you start? Like, when did that concept really jump into your mind? You know? 
Uh, honestly, at a very young age, um, I've that. always been, <laughs> I've always been a I I said no to things very young that Corbin didn't want to do. But when Corbin wanted to exactly. do something, he said yes, like all the time. Corbin, you want to do this dance convention? Yep, sign me up. Like as children. You don't have fear. Most kids don't have fear, right? That kind of comes into yeah. us as we get older. Um, I was, nobody could stop me. I wanted to do it all. I wanted to be seen. I That's loved, nice. when I was younger, I loved being the center of attention. Like, I just knew that this was something that I could do. I knew I was good at it. And I wanted to explore every opportunity, you know, like I just wanted to learn, 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 have opportunities to show what it is that I knew I was good at. And, you know, <clears throat> I always saw myself not being the the smart child. And I just talked about this, you know, um, this past week at this seminar I was at, but I knew, okay, Corbin's not the smart child, but she's the dancer. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to run with it. So the wheels fall off. So, yeah, I said yes. I said yes to the endless opportunities. I said yes to being vulnerable, putting myself out there. You know, I I just, I knew that this was something that I loved to do and I was good at it. So why not give myself a shot? What's the worst that could happen, right? I don't get the job. I, they say no. I don't get the yeah, scholarship. Right. I, right. you know, I, um, yeah, I was, I was more fearless back then when I was a child. Um, so at a very young age, oh yeah, I That's was awesome. saying yes to almost everything <laughs> that involved dance. I wanted to, to ask you this. Now, if you could go back in time and give advice to your younger self, what advice would you give yourself? Ah. And we're not talking change in the past. Yeah, we're not yeah. talking, you know, like back to the future type stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would tell... Little old Corbin um, to never ask for permission to be great. Oh, <laughs> gotta brush that one off right there. That was that was nice. Never yeah. ask for permission to be great. Now, now, unpack that for me. Why? Because. Um, I feel like younger people, younger kids, they don't, I just, and I'm gonna speak to myself. I don't remember when I was younger ever feeling like, you know, okay, I have to hold back because of X, Y, and Z. No, I was fearless. And I just, this is my own opinion. I just feel like children are fearless. And yeah. as you get older, you know, the experiences we go through, just freaking life, this industry, coming in contact with shitty people. Sorry, but, you know, like you're, no, no, it's, it's true. you're, we get these walls that come up and then it's like, dang, you know, like, can I do, can I, what? Yes, you can. We've allowed, I've allowed um, this industry, certain types of people to hold me back because I felt shy or I felt like I was making people uncomfortable. And, you know, I, I wish I could tell my former self to never let that happen, never have let it happen, but it did. I'm back. But, um, I would tell her that because you don't ever have to ask someone to be great. And if somebody else feels uncomfortable by what it is that you bring to the table, that is something that they have to work through. It is not yourself. Yes. Right. You are not, yes. you didn't do anything to make these people feel any type of way. They have their own insecurities that are being brought up to make you feel like you've done something wrong, make you feel like you need to pull back to make you feel like, you know, you did, you know, something wrong. No, it is something that they have to deal with. Not you step into your greatness and don't ask for permission. Yeah. <laughs> and if any of those people are blocking your path, find a new path find, well, <laughs> yep. you know because you just our, tomorrow is not promised our life is i mean death is is the real thing it, it happens and we don't know when it's coming but it's something that's inevitable it's something that we no one can you know get around 
So why would you settle less on a day-to-day basis because of somebody else's insecurity? I'm not doing it anymore. And I hope yeah. anyone listening, if you are doing it, stop it, right? Because you owe it to yourself to be the best version of yourself, to show up every day, you know, giving what it is that you are meant to give. And um, I could preach all day about that, but that's where I see no, I'm, I'm <laughs> I love talk it. about I love it. <laughs> now, where do you... Where do you see yourself going in the next year or two? What do you want to really work on? What projects would you like to dive into? So um, it's very, very, very in early stages. Um, But I see myself having my own nonprofit organization um, in the next year or two. Um, I see myself um, definitely still in the entertainment industry, but maybe in a different light as far as um, uh, more so maybe acting. Um, Mm. I love stage. I love being on stage, Um, but maybe it's a different stage, right? I I trained as an actor, so I say go for it. Yeah, and I've done a little bit of work. I do like comedy sketches and things like that. So I have a natural... I guess like ability to do so. I just got to now like take it seriously and and really start um, working on, you know, my acting skills. Um, I see myself the next year or two have impacted over, I'd say, um, you know, maybe like 2,500 to 5,000 people's lives as far as educating them financially. Um, That's awesome. I'll be a wife. I'm getting married next year. <laughs> um, and probably Maybe a mommy. I don't know. Um, yeah. And just stepping into really Corbin entrepreneur side. You know, I've always, I've, I've only seen myself as a professional dancer and I'm really starting to see, you know, my whole, you know, not asking for permission to be great. I took that on myself. You know, I don't have to ask or wait for permission from anybody to try something new, to step into this new light, to um, become this new woman, to have new ideas, to have a new purpose. So that's kind of where I am, a potential um, book author. I'm in the process like of writing that. a book. Um, yeah, that's kind of where my where I'll be at in the next year or two. So, sounds like your your vision is building an empire, and I think that's awesome. Yeah, it sure is. That's you got to one thing I'm realizing. You know, um, I had a conversation with my father, who is almost sixty, and I'm like, Dad, you know, what do you want to you know what do you want to leave behind? And I don't think he ever thought about this, right? I'm like, you know, Mm. one thing that I I hear a lot is that, you know, you die twice, right? You die when you get put into the ground and then the last time that your your last name is ever said, right? So my last name is Hunter, will be Johnson soon, but Hunter nonetheless. And it's like, okay, so, you know, dad, like, what do you want to leave behind when you go? And he was like, dang, (laughs) you know, like you're right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, me and my father are actually in business together and we, um, are working on the, the whole financial literacy side, because even though he's 60, it's never, it's not even too late for him to get his life together and live out his last few days, how he wants to and share it with his family and kids and grandkids and whoever else, you know, Uh, that's a, a whole different long story, but, um, Hopefully I answered your question. I kind of went on a little bit of a tangent. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, tangents are the best tan- thing. And I love tangents. Yes. They take us into wonderful new territory. Yeah. So, so no, that was building great. an empire, like you said, it, it's something that I am doing. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm very strongly passionate about because you're going to know who Corbin Hunter is to the day I'm in the ground. And that's a fact. Uh.